Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to using a transistor as a switch. In this video we'll cover what a transistor is, we'll briefly cover what a transistor is, and then we'll talk about how to use it as a switch. So what is a transistor? Well a transistor is a semiconductor device used to amplify and switch electronic signals or electrical power. It's composed of semiconductor materials, usually at least three terminals. And I'll, I'll say this for clarification because a transistor, the word transistor can mean uh, a broad range of devices. I'm going to be focusing on bipolar transistors or BJTs. For instance, you could use the word transistor to mean MOSFETs as well. I have a separate video on using MOSFETs as a switch. You can refer to that on my YouTube channel if you're working with MOSFETs. In the picture to the right, you can kind of see some of the form factors. Transistors come in various packages. You know, the top is for real high power, getting down to lower power to surface mount. We'll actually be working in with this package uh, in this example, this through hole package right here. So a transistor versus a mechanical switch. Why would we want to use a transistor as a switch? Well, longer switching life, there's no mechanical parts. We're just changing the physics of semiconductor materials to turn a pathway from high resistance to very low resistance, an open to a short. Uh, they're silent switchers, just unlike mechanical switches, they don't make any noise. And the setup can be actually be a lot simpler than a mechanical switch. On the bottom there, you can see some examples of BJTs. So the two flavors are an NPN and a PNP. And that just has to do with the material. So you have a, a negative doped material, a positive doped material, and a negative doped material for an NPN transistor. And then for a PNP, it's the opposite. And you can see they're denoted by the arrows here at the emitter. I should mention the three, the three terminals are called collector, emitter, and base. The base is what is what we're going to use to turn the switch on or off. And the collector and the emitter and the emitter are going to be where our current flows. Here's an example with an NPN. To turn the NPN on, we want to make the base more positive than the emitter. We want, we want the base to have a more positive voltage than the emitter. Remember, the base is going to be here, the emitter's here. So if the emitter's at ground level, we want to make the base, let's say we're working with 3.3 volts logic. We could, we could use a Arduino, for instance, and a digital pin on Arduino to turn the base to 3.3 volts to turn Q1 on. Or if we're using the 5 volt Arduino, we can use the 5 volt. PNP, it's the opposite. So for the PNP transistor, we want to make the base more negative than the emitter. And typically, we, we have the load in different spots. So with the PNP, we'll typically have the load between the emitter and ground. And with an NPN, we're typically going to have the load or what we're trying to switch electrical power to between the power source, VCC, and the transistor. Now, an important thing to note, I show a resistor at R2. This is to limit the current that goes through the base. Now, ideally, we can think of the base as an open, but really some current flows between the base and the emitter when we apply a voltage there. The resistor R2 is essentially there to keep that current pretty low. And for R2, you typically would use a value of 1 kilo ohms. Now, depending on the data sheet, that may differ, but for most transistors, you're safe using 1 kilo ohms. So here is the uh, transistor I'm going to use in this example, and these are very popular model of transistors. For the NPN, I'm going to use a 2N3904, and for the PNP, I'm going to use a 2N3906. Now, saturation, that is the mode where we turn the transistor totally on, meaning it has a very low position, resistance, so it acts like a short. So for this, it's only 0.95 volts. And once again, this is well within the power range where we can apply 5 volts or 3.3 volts without hurting the transistor. It's within the transistor spec. So I'll use 5 volts in my example. And for the saturation for the uh, PNP, the, P, the PNP version is, is negative 0.95. So from the emitter, if we put a multimeter across the emitter and the base, with the base would have to be in respect to the emitter, negative 0.95 volts. That doesn't mean you have to apply a negative voltage to the base. It just means that then there has to be a positive voltage at the emitter. And here I just want to kind of show, this is a current curve 
Oh yeah, a characteristic curve of the of a transistor. Now keep in mind, besides just using a transistor as a switch, one of the main things it's used for is amplifying signals. And and you typically use the transistor in the active region to amplify signals. Now for us, since we're using it as a switch, we want to use it in the cutoff region, which is to have the switch act like an open or the transistor to act like an open switch, and the saturation region, which is has the transistor act like a short or a closed switch. Now note that the, the transistor's behavior does depend on somewhat on the current flow. Uh, and you can see the IB stands for base current, which is really the, the current flowing from the base to the emitter and the emitter to the base. And the IC is the collector current or the current flowing from the collector down to the emitter. Now, for the most part, for most transistors, you don't have to think about this current too much. You just have to think about the voltage you're using at the base. Now, there is exceptions and it, it could be on the data sheet and depend on your setup, but for the most part, we can just think about the voltage we're applying to the base and the voltage at the emitter and the collector for turning an NPN or a PNP on. Here's my example setup. And for this setup, I'm going to uh, use an NPN and a PNP. I connect them both to a digital pin on the Arduino. You know, between the base, I have a one kilo ohm resistor to kind of re reduce the amount of current from flowing from the digital pin to the base to the emitter. You can see I have a mistake here breaking the uh, wire. This really should be connected. But I have the 5 volt power supply connected, well, in, in the case of a PMP, to the collector of the, the, the uh, transistor, and in the case of the MPN, to the uh, LED that I'm trying to turn on. Now, I put a 300 ohm resistor here. Now, there's not necessarily a requirement to have a resistor in this circuit. I just put it there because I want to limit the current that's going to flow through the LED. So that's why the resistor's there. The LED is my real load that I'm trying to switch on and off. What we're going to do is we're going to toggle D2 to high and low, so 5 volts and 0 volts. And for the PMP, 0 volts will turn on the LED, and 0 volts will, will turn the LED off for the NPN. And then the opposite is true. When we're at 5 volts, the NPN will be on, so the LED will be on, and the PMP will be off at 5 volts, and so the LED will be off. Now, one thing I want to mention, and I hope this doesn't confuse anybody, you might say, well, if there's zero volts here, you know, before there's zero volts there, let's say there's five volts here, and then all of a sudden we change it to zero, you have essentially zero volts at the emitter and zero volts at the base. You know, that's not negative 0.95 voltage difference. The reason that, that, that everything works fine is, remember, this is not a perfect switch. There's in-between states. We just transition through those in-between between states really quickly. So when I change the base from five volts to zero volts, even though we're not in saturation, current starts to flow through the transistor and then voltage starts to appear at the emitter and the transistor quickly turns on. So remember, there is sort of a transition period. It's not like a mechanical switch where you have this perfect on and off type condition. Another thing I'll mention too is you have to look at the limitations for this at the data sheet because if you have too much voltage at the collector, for either an MPN or, or a PNP, you can actually break the transistor and the transistor will just either fry up or become shorted. Also note that when the transistor is off, there can still be a tiny trickle of current flowing, but be very small. And note that when the transistor is on or when it's in saturation, there is some kind of finite resistance. It's gonna be very low, less than an ohm in most cases, but there is some kind of finite resistance. It's not a perfect short, which is true for any switch, not just uh, a transistor switch, which is also true for mechanical switches. So here's our setup. I'm going to go show the code. The code is very simple. I just set pin 2 to output, to a digital output. I then toggle it low and then high, and I delay for uh, a second in between each. So let's take a look at the video to see this um, example in action. Here's my setup. I have the NPN on the right. I'm not playing the video yet. NPN on the right, and I have the PMP on the left. You can tell because here's the collector, and this is where my uh, LED is connected. And for the PNP, here's the emitter, and that's where my LED is connected. Here's my resistors for limiting current. Here's my base resistor, and here's the uh, Arduino in the background. You can see the switches. They're just turned on, then off, on, then off on then off. So we're just toggling them on and off. 
So that's the, the simple example. Okay, so we looked at using a transistor as a switch. Here's something I want to mention because it is possible you might be using the transistor to switch a device that might have an inductive or might be a very inductive load. And in that case, you want to probably want to include a flywheel diode. Here I've, I've, I've shown an example. So the electrical solenoid can be any type of load that has a high inductance. So what type of loads have high inductances? Uh, motors do, relays do. You know, you might be using a relay if you're using a transistor to switch on a higher power relay switch. And also solenoids do and, and certain things that you switch on and off that have mechanical motion. So these devices can have a high inductive load. And what that means is when you switch them on, they store power. They store field and they store power or energy in a magnetic field. And so when you switch them off, that energy in the magnetic field needs somewhere to dissipate. And so the flywheel diode allows current to flow in the opposite direction. It blocks it in one direction, if you're familiar with the diode, but the diode will forward bias if there's any back EMF that, that wants to flow out of the, the inductive load that you're working with. So just something to note. If you want to grab the simple code, go to my blog. For more details on transistors, there's a great site called Electronics Tutorials. If you want to learn more about how they work and, and so on and so forth, that's a great site to go to. So there's a link to that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.